Um, so hi everyone, I'm Mo Weinberger and I'm here to talk about from illuminating to eliminating crypto jacking techniques in uh, cloud native. Uh, on the today agenda, we are going to, I'm going to present myself, then we will talk about the crypto mining process, then we will go over the birth of uh, crypto jacking and why it's so appealing to bad actors. Then we will go deep dive into some of the um, crypto jacking evolutions and the trend, and we'll, we will end up with detection and uh, mitigation. Okay, so quick intro. So hi everyone again, I'm Mo Weinberger. I'm a staff software engineer in uh, Aqua Security. I joined Aqua a year ago as part of the uh, acquisition of uh, Argon Security. Before that, I worked for uh, Microsoft for about uh, four years around uh, cloud security products. And I really like to mix the engineering work with uh, threat hunting and security uh, researching stuff. And this is basically why I'm here and this is basically why I'm talking about this topic. Okay, so let's start. So let's talk a, bit, a little bit about what is the actually crypto mining process. So in short, it's basically the process of verifying transaction on the blockchain. Uh, this verification uh, process is actually solving uh, cryptographic uh, puzzles and this requires uh, compute power and because this activity of uh, verifying the transaction is super important for the uh, security of the uh, crypto uh, network. Um, they, those miners are getting reward with a fee, with a transaction fee, um, in a type of uh, you know, new coins. Okay, so let's see how easy is that to become a crypto miner. Um, so all you need is basically four things. So the first thing, you need to choose your cryptocurrency coin. There are like multiple coins and each one has its own capabilities and its own features. Then you will need to buy, uh, buy your equipment and as far as it will be uh, uh, st strong equipment, you could uh, mine uh, efficiency, efficiently, sorry. Um, but if you're a bad actor, you can just uh, hijack systems and uh, run your uh, miner. You will also need to create a crypto wallet. It's very simple and um, totally uh, open source and free and you need to uh, choose the mining software and configure it on your uh, device. So it's super easy, you can do all those, all those uh, steps in just a few minutes. Okay, so let's quick, quick, uh, quickly uh, review the birth of actually crypto jacking um, activity. So it kind of started on 2017 when CoinHive uh, offered um, a web client miner code which basically means if you have, uh, if you are an owner of a popular website, you can take their code, put it in your uh, website, and then the visitors will start uh, mining crypto coin uh, for you, for helping with the funds of the site. Um, then we start seeing that um, there were some um, website, popular website, especially on the video sites, that uh, adopt this approach and add. Uh, code into their uh, website, uh, but the thing is most of them uh, add it uh, secretly, which means they, they didn't notify the visitors, and of course the, you know, the visitors, the users uh, didn't really like it. It basically utilized their uh, CPU uh, till the maximum. Um, then we start seeing that bad actors uh, that breach a website uh, focused on uh, government base and university um, affect them with uh, conive code and we also saw that uh, those bad actors targeting unpatched servers with some uh, known vulnerability and again they just affect um, uh, affect them with uh, crypto mining um, then we start seeing uh, um, that they also targeting uh, unpatched routers and actually um, affect them with um, with uh, conive code which basically means that uh, on every HTTP request uh, that's sent into the router, the router uh, inject in response, uh, con hive, uh, add a conhive code. Um, and at that point, we start seeing like crypto mining everywhere. This is basically an advertising screen in some parking lot. And did you spot a miner here? It's on the right. Here it is, this is a nice hash miner a client that uh, run on this uh, IoT device. Okay, so basically, but why it's so appealing to bad actors? So there are um, 
there are multiple uh, reasons for that. So the first reason is about the uh, anonymization. So basically when you create a crypto wallet, you don't need to provide any ident identification and to do it, to doing the correlation is uh, impossible. And there are like additional coins like Monero that add another layer of uh, anonymity and they basically uh, not allows to see the blockchain. So for example, if I have a crypto wallet, I'm a bad actor, uh, I steal crypto coins, I am a hija uh, hijacking systems, and now the everyone um, detect my crypto wallet as uh, suspicious. So once I just transfer the funds into another wallet, uh, it couldn't be traceable because the transaction on the blockchain are not public. Um, it's also very easy to fast cash out once I have the funds on my crypto wallet, I'm good to convert it to other coin, use exchange to cash out. And we will see that uh, it's super easy to do it in scale. Uh, it, it's also suitable for uh, newbies and uh, script kiddies. There is no like uh, deep knowledge that uh, you need to have on, uh, on the cryptocurrency network. Um, you can just run one line of code and you are uh, good to, to start in the crypto mining. And unfortunately, um, organization consider this uh, risk as a nuisance. Okay, so enough with that. Let's start seeing some uh, crypto jacking techniques uh, that we saw um, in our uh, research team called Nautilus in Aqua Security and also when connecting with organization. So the first thing we will focus on is, uh, is Kubernetes environment. So on the left you could see the master node which contains the API server and other stuff on the right is yet another node. Okay, and we will go over on the popular attack vectors that bad actors, specifically crypto jackers, uh, are targeting and uh, looking for. So the first attack vector is basically uh, looking for a vulnerable uh, application, which means that in this scenario we have uh, Nginx that's running on a pod. Um, it's exposed to the internet and this Nginx has some RC, uh, RC uh, vulnerability. And the attacker doesn't, at that point, doesn't really care if it's run on Kubernetes or not, okay? He just scan the worldwide APs, looking for, uh, for this known vulnerability, uh, since it's exploitable, so it's very easy to retrieve the exploit code, and it just uh, execute it, and now he has a foothold in the pod. So at that point, we start seeing in the last few years that those uh, actors uh, are start being familiar with Kubernetes, environment and they are trying to uh, look uh, for a lateral movement, for a, a privilege elevation. Um, they are uh, checking if, do, if uh, this uh, pod run in any um, privilege container or any configuration like mount to us that allows him to, uh, to control the whole node. And this is basically the first attack vector that uh, I review here. Uh, second one is uh, misconfiguration, misconfiguration on the Docker daemon. So Docker, Docker was around a little bit before Kubernetes became so popular. And we, we still see uh, customers that, uh, and organizations that are using uh, Dockers. Um, and this one is about a misconfiguration of the Docker daemons, which basically means that uh, the Docker daemon port is exposed to the internet and there is no any authentication or access level control that uh, is required. And again, these bad actors basically scan the worldwide, looking for uh, this, uh, this specific port, and they are just starting to communicate with the API. What they, are, what they are actually able to do is to list all the images, list the running containers, get in shell on those containers, and deploy new containers with uh, crypto mining. Um, Third attack vector is about poisoning the uh, public registries. For example, Docker Hub is the most famous um, registry, and we see that actors doing something that call uh, this, uh, this uh, technique, technique sorry, uh, called typo squatting. And basically, what they, what they are trying to do is to um, push a malicious container. For example, this on the right we have the valid and popular TensorFlow uh, Docker image. It's very pop is very uh, popular uh, machine learning uh, framework, and this actor uh, published a Docker image that called uh, tens TensorFlow, uh, which, as you guess, uh, contains a crypto miner, and they are basically uh, depends on the uh, 
on the fact that developer will misspell the container image. Um, as you can see, the, this image specifically has more than uh, 1K uh, pools, uh, so this technique is, is quite uh, work. Um, okay, the four attack vector is about a misconfiguration of uh, Kubernetes dashboard. So Kubernetes dashboard is uh, an easy way to, an easy interface uh, on your uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster. And what you actually uh, capable of is to list all the running pods, list secret, and even get a shell on, on those container, all just from your uh, browser. Okay, this is actually uh, an exposed Docker dashboard in the wild. Um, and once and once you uh, and and this basically allows you to have uh, full control on your uh, cluster. Um, another attack vector is about uh, accessing the uh, Kubernetes API when it misconfigured. Uh, again, the API, the Kubernetes API port is exposed, and it doesn't require any authentication or access level control. And the Kubernetes API is actually resp uh, responsible to communicate it with the node. And once you able to control it, you basically have a uh, cluster level uh, control. Um, and the last one is about uh, misconfiguration of the kubelet. Uh, so the kubelet is stored on every one of uh, the node and irresponsible to communicate it with the Kubernetes API. And once you misconfigure it, um, so the bad actor has uh, a node level uh, control here and basically he allows to, to uh, execute command on the running containers and deploy new containers. And, and at that point, we also saw that, uh, that, that those bad actors are familiar with, uh, with the Kubernetes uh, features itself, and they are uh, leveraging them in order to deploy the, con the, the mining containers in a scale, means they are using a daemon set deployment and, um, and replica set in order to deploy the, their stuff uh, on every on every node and uh, on every pod. Okay, a second. Okay, so basically those uh, attack vectors are being around for uh, like many years, um, but we still see that CryptoJacker uh, are upgrading their uh, techniques and uh, doing the optimization. One of those optimization is about changing the huge pages, which basically allows the actors to uh, increase the memory page. Um, uh, and basically those actors, uh, uh, once they are, uh, have a foothold on the containers, if they will just run the minor as is, it will not be that uh, uh, efficient for them. So they are basically looking for how many cores and basically the architecture of the environment. And they set the huge pages to, to be optimal. And by the documentation of a few of uh, those open source miners, this could uh, this could help uh, with increased uh, uh, efficiency by 50%. Um, we also saw that uh, those bad actors are aware that there are more uh, bad actors on the environment. We also see it on uh, our honeypots that there are like multiple actors that basically battling each other because no one of them wants to share the resources, right? So we see them trying to disable and kill uh, each one of those. Um, and we also see that they are uh, adopting uh, techniques of uh, root keys and fileless, and they are also trying to um, disable and remove the cloud uh, security agent. Uh, those two examples are one of uh, Aliyun, which is the Alibaba cloud agent, and the uh, bottom one is the Gcloud agent. Um, but what do you think? Okay, we, we saw some techniques on the Kubernetes side, on the runtime side. What do you think? Are those CryptoJacker uh, shifting left with the ecosystem? Are they aware of, uh, of the new technology that the organization are uh, adopting around the, around the left side? So, of course, yes. This is basically a campaign that uh, we discovered a, a year ago uh, of uh, bad actors that are trying to abuse the CI CD free tier. So basically, they are not uh, needed to find any, any uh, unpatched servers or misconfigur mis sorry, misconfiguration. Um, they, are also, they are only need to craft some, um, some, te uh, some techniques that they can do it uh, in scale. And basically, they are the, this method is uh, unlimited. 
So what those bad actors are uh, basically done here is uh, creating a GitHub repo, connect it into CI/CD platform, okay? Use the free tier, of course, and on every change of this repo, it basically triggers uh, a build job, a build process, all right? And basically, those actors understand that the build step uh, could be hijacked, the resource of it could be hijacked uh, in the favor of uh, crypto mining. Okay, so what basically happened here, how, how they made it in scale? So on the build step, uh, they said that first they will um, clone the repo, then they will choose some, uh, some random file and, main so and made some uh, random change. Then they will push this change uh, uh, inside the repository and what will happen, another CI uh, job will trigger, which basically means at that point that they have infinity loop because every build will trigger another build. And after they trigger another build, they are pulling a, a custom-made miner from another uh, repository, and they run this miner uh, until the maximum time of the CI uh, uh, offering. Uh, this table we found on one of those uh, bad actor uh, repositories is basically elaborate uh, what are the free tiers uh, on those CI, CD, and uh, SaaS services. Um, and we also saw that uh, those bad actors are learning and they are, uh, are aware of the every uh, limitation of, uh, of every CI CD platform. This one targeted GitHub action. As you can see, uh, it, uh, it uh, set the maximum parallel jobs to 20, which is the uh, limit, which is the maximum uh, allows. They also say, uh, said uh, that every job will uh, run no matter if a previous job uh, were failed. And they also uh, use interesting uh, evasion techniques here, which uh, their miner is an ELF binary, which basically run on uh, Linux, but they run it uh, on a Windows box. And they use and they uh, able to execute this ELF by the WSL uh, feature of, uh, of Windows, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, we believe they, they doing so uh, uh, for the for running the uh, ELF binary in kind of uh, sandbox mode. Um, another evasion technique that we we saw here is in order to make the network detection uh, a little bit higher, uh, harder. Sorry. So what they uh, done here? They are using uh, rootkey techniques that uh, wrapped by uh, uh, npm uh, package. So they basically just pull an npm package, which is very uh, regular and popular, you know, um, a thing to do it as part of the as part of your uh, build. Uh, but this one is wrapping uh, root root keys CLI that allows the bad actors to hide uh, his miner from the process list. And as you can see on the right, they managed to round multiple uh, GitHub action jobs successfully, um, and each jobs uh, run into the maximum of. Uh, of uh, of the allow of uh, GitHub uh, action, like uh, until it exceeds the maximum time. Okay, and this one is kind of funny. Uh, shortly after I published the write-up about how bad actors uh, abuse uh, those CI/CD free tiers, I got a message on LinkedIn that says, "Hi, more. I'm a crypto miner, and I think we share the same interest regarding the field. And I think to myself, that shouldn't be the key, uh, the key point, right? Yeah." Okay, but um, what about supply chain techniques? Are those uh, bad actors uh, adopting some uh, supply chain techniques? So as you guess, all the answers here are yes. Um, so yeah, they are shifting uh, left and they are aware of the risk on the software supply chain. And just to align here, so basically the software supply chain is uh, start with developers that write code, manage it in uh, source code management, then build it, ship the, uh, package it into artifacts, and then deploy it in, into the runtime. And the thing about it, that every one of those steps that I just mentioned, um, using uh, open source uh, third party dependencies. And those bad actors are understand the one single point of failure here, um, and they uh, target exactly that. So the first attack vector that we saw 
is about a technique that's called uh, type of squatting. And this one was dis discovered uh, by our friends uh, on check marks. Uh, we saw, uh, they saw that uh, these bad actors uh, push multiple uh, open source package into a PyPy, into the public PyPy. Um, and uh, it uh, contains, as you guess, a minor, and they try to mimic the popular uh, request package on a PyPy. And because, because PyPy uh, uh, just um, request the GitHub uh, repository that correlate uh, to the, the package. So this bad actor just put the valid uh, request one and he gets the exact amount of stars and forks and he was able to really make a good uh, view of, uh, of this package. Um, another, uh, another attack vector is around uh, something that called Dependency confusion. It happened with uh, PyTorch just like a few weeks ago. Um, and basically what happened here is that as part of the PyTorch build processing, its uh, load um, is uh, owns dependencies. And some of them wo uh, were uh, internal dependencies. And, and the way that, uh, and the way that uh, when you're trying to load dependencies on uh, Python, so you're first going to the public PyPy index. And if you can find it, it will uh, get into your uh, internal uh, repository. And because uh, PyTorch didn't preserve uh, this uh, specific library, uh, library on the PyPy uh, public index, so this bad actors found it. He pushed a new package into the public PyPy with malicious uh, code, and PyTorch um, pulls it as part of the build. And he totally got uh, compromised, this version. And if you think to yourself, okay, we saw uh, type of spotting techniques, we also see um, dependency confusion techniques, it could be like some uh, security solution around that that could help um, with uh, defense. Um, the thing about open source dependencies is that uh, there are multiple popular packages that are maintained by just single maintainer, maybe few maintainers, and we are not really aware of who uh, stand behind them and what is the security measure, uh, measurement that uh, he takes and how, secure, and how, kills, how secure uh, is he. So we see here a bad example of uh, UA parser uh, that happens uh, a year, maybe two years ago, which is very popular uh, UA, um, UI uh, library on uh, NPM. And uh, this one got compromised by a leaked token of, uh, of the owner and it got uh, uh, breached badly. Uh, this library was uh, used by uh, the most uh, big tech. And this bad actor had uh, crypto mining, but also password steal, stealing uh, code. And he targeted both Windows and Linux. And he basically trying to target both the developers, the build system, and the uh, runtime. Um, but you could think to yourself, OK, like what is the actual risk here? Um, so the obvious one is about uh, financial loss and the service degradation. Either it, either it uh, runs on your uh, AWS account or like cloud account or on your build, it will increase your uh, 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 charge. It w you will also uh, uh, face a service degradation. Uh, but the most important here is about uh, those bad actors has the ability to run um, arbitrary code on your uh, environment. If it's on your build, they can basically steal your uh, uh, secrets, and on your uh, runtime environment, they will start. Uh, they will try to uh, elevate permission and lateral movement to other high assets like uh, your uh, DB and other uh, sensitive information. So, what we can actually do about it? Okay, so. Um, so if you don't have any security measurement or if you have some, so my su suggestion here is first follow the compliance and best practices. There are like multiple organizations uh, out there. Uh, this is just two of them uh, with uh, security expert that uh, invest their time and their uh, expertise in order to create um, standards and uh, best practices specifically for each popular um, technology. And the second thing about it is you need to understand your uh, architecture 
form your cloud into your uh, form your code into your cloud. Understand what are the, what are the uh, technologies that you are using, what are the integration parts, and basically follow those uh, best practices and uh, guidelines. And there are many like open source tools out there that that could help you uh, run those uh, run those uh, guidelines and checks. This is uh, just uh, two of them. The first one is uh, Trivi that basically can help you run on your Kubernetes cluster and even on your uh, YAML before it gets deployed, uh, security posture management to find uh, those misconfigurations that I just present you and the uh, others. Um, and Chainbench, with, uh, which is focused on your uh, software supply chain uh, and uh, running the same approaches, uh, approaches but on your uh, left side. And those two can also uh, provide you a compliance report, either it's a CIS or a other, and then you could see your uh, security posture management uh, based on those uh, compliance report. Uh, if you got uh, to here, so you can also scan your code, your infrastructure as code and dependencies for vulnerabilities, for misconfiguration, and you can also do it with uh, Trivi. And you can also run a uh, static code analysis. SAM group is a great uh, tool for that uh, with uh, more than uh, 1,000 rules uh, that support most of the popular uh, uh, languages. And it's able to detect um, uh, risky code uh, and even before it gets merged into your uh, source code. Like for example, it could uh, detect uh, XSS and uh, injection, injection risk uh, within your code. Um, but this is not enough, right? Uh, trying to reduce your uh, risk and fix misconfiguration um, most of the time is not enough um, because basically you have um, some vulnerabilities and uh, other misconfiguration that you didn't have the time to to address and there are always like uh, new uh, zero days and other uh, vulnerabilities. So you need, we need to get uh, one layer deeper. We need to look for uh, abnormal and uh, suspicious activity Again, on your cloud account, to look for any increase in your uh, resource creation on your uh, abnormal uh, uh, identity uh, activity. Um, um, and also you need to have uh, some uh, random protection. There are like great tools out there. I will just uh, mention one of them, which is uh, Tracy. Uh, is, ba is based on the eBPF technologies, which means it runs on your uh, kernel level. Um, and it allows to detect uh, root keys and uh, fileless attacks. And if you uh, don't trust your uh, third party uh, libraries, you can use uh, Gardog by Datadog that has the capability to run a static uh, code analysis and detect malicious uh, code like uh, crypto mining uh, on your uh, PyPy libraries. Um, so this is it basically. Thank you everyone and uh, I will uh, appreciate if you could uh, scan the QR code and uh, provide the feedback. Thanks. I don't think I have uh, enough time for questions, but feel free to uh, connect me in person. Thanks.